It is once again time for our weekly segment on advice of counsel. We're going to bring in Lockdown Panthers host Julian Council. Julian, I, I kind of wrote myself into this with uh, with the name, so I had to come up with legal puns every week. So I'll start with this one. After two interceptions against the Cowboys, is the jury still out on Panthers QB Sam Darnold? Yes, 100% the jury is still out on Sam Darnold. I was one of the big skeptics, skeptics of Sam Darnold coming into the season, as I've said here and as I've said on the show, and I remain skeptical even through four weeks. And the first three weeks, he played relatively well. Like, he was solid against the Jets. He was really good against the Saints, despite the really weird interception he had. And then in the second half against the Texans in week three, he was fantastic putting this offense on his back and being able to win that game without Christian McCaffrey there in the second half. Darnold's had his good moments. He's also had his bad moments. And I've been waiting to see when Sam Darnold went out there and struggled, whether it was because of his own mistakes, which those two interceptions certainly were. You can look at the first one and probably blame it on the offensive line in terms of just the pressure getting to him. But that's a ball, like he said, after the game, he cannot go out there and throw. But to bounce back in the final two possessions where they score those two touchdowns, I see a lot of growth and improvement from Sam Darnold. So I like what he's done so far. But after four games, we can't say the guy's a franchise quarterback. I think this is probably more of a two-year experiment than a one-year experiment, considering they picked up his fifth-year option. And I think Matt Rule and this offense really believes in Sam Darnold and what he can do here in Carolina. But we did see some of the same things that we saw back in New York with Sam Darnold. There were times where the offensive line got a lot of pressure on him, or at least the defensive line of the Cowboys got pressure on him, and he did not get rid of the football in time. I know we like to blame the offensive line all the time, but sometimes sacks can be a quarterback stat. Again, I like what I see from Sam Darnold. I'm not yet ready to say that he is obviously the franchise here in Carolina. And one thing, though, he is a dual threat, five touchdowns already <laughs> rushing the first, the, for the most ever by a quarterback in the Super Bowl era through the first four games of the season. And he's had three straight 300 yard passing games, even though a lot of empty calories in the one today and with the fourth quarter already being down by three scores. But still, first Carolina Panthers quarterback to ever do that. Cam Newton never did that. Jake DeLome never did that. A lot of credit for Sam Darnold, the way he's played so far this season. But I still need to see a lot more before being totally convinced that he is the answer long term term here in Carolina. Sam Darnold running man despite the loss. That is a huge bonus this season through four weeks. Dull okay, threat. counselor, should Darnold pursue litigation against his offensive line? Five sacks by the Cowboys on Sunday. Um, yeah, you can look at suing uh, Matt Rule and <laughs> Scott Fitterer, too, because it was their idea for the first two signings of free agency to sign Cam Irving and Pat Elfline, of course, who's on IR right now and did not play today, but Cam Irving and Pat Elfline were two of the five worst offensive linemen over the last three seasons, according to Pro Football Focus. Yet, the Carolina Panthers felt like those two guys, because they have versatility on the offensive line of Elfline can play guard and he can play center, um, day, not daily, but Irving, he can play left tackle. We can also play guard. Those were two priority signings, and both of those guys have not been good so far this season. Irving up until today was fine, but he really struggled against Randy Gregory, giving up a, a couple of pressures. Not just a couple. Everyone on this offensive line gave up a pressure. Dennis Daly, who's come in and started in the absence of John Miller week one in the last couple weeks for Pat Elfline, he hasn't been great. John Miller hasn't been great. Matt Paradis at center gave up a sack on the first possession of the game. He hasn't been good. He said after the game, it sucks to lose and to get your butt kicked like they did against the Cowboys. The only offensive lineman you can rely on is Taylor Moten. It's an issue that we knew coming to the season was going to persist. It's going to be a season-long issue. I know people want to see Deontay Brown, who's yet to be activated so far this season, the sixth-round pick out of Alabama. Maybe he's a better option, but I feel like if he was a better option, the coaching staff would have put him out there. Maybe he's just not ready. Brady Christensen, the third-round pick out of BYU, who a lot of people want to see. If he's a better option, I think the coaching staff would put him out there. But for whatever reason, they haven't done that. Matt Rule talks about having his top five out there. Right now, apparently, these are his top five guys. In terms of experience, sure, but in terms of talent, and readiness for the NFL, I don't know. It's going to be an issue for the Carolina Panthers. We knew at some point in time it was going to cost them a game. I think that's one of the main factors why they lost a the game today against the Cowboys. It's going to be a factor why they lose other games moving forward. And teams have adjusted to the Panthers. You go back to week one. The Jets, when they started bringing pressure there in the third quarter, the Panthers had issues. The Saints in week two, when they started bringing pressure there in the second half, the Panthers had issues in being dull in the third quarter. And yet again today, and Greg Olson, who was on the call on the Fox broadcast, had said towards the end of the first half, they're starting to figure out this Panthers offensive line. And the Dan Quinn, the former Falcons head coach in the D.C. for the Cowboys right now, he sent the dogs all the second half long, and the offensive line struggled. So it's going to be an issue all year long. You just got to hope and pray that Sam Darnold still stays healthy and that maybe these guys can improve. I just don't see that happening. All right. 
for this last one, we'll go defense. They came in through three weeks, giving up just 45 yards per game on the ground. The Cowboys ran for 245. So to those fans that say this defense is overrated, do you object, sir? I mean, clearly the Panthers all around are frauds. Like, oh, oh, the Jets win. That doesn't mean anything. Saints, yeah, well, they're missing all those guys. Texans, no. Everything's going to be just fine. The defense still has talent. They were a young unit. Hassan Reddick had said two weeks ago that he was surprised by just how good they were to start off the season. They weren't going to continue to go out there and hold teams of 45 yards rushing, especially when Ezekiel Elliott, one of the best running backs in the league, is in the backfield. And Tony Pollard also can go out there and do it. And, hey, Dak Prescott said he's not going to run anymore. He had some pretty big runs scrambling for the Cowboys on Sunday. So the defense will be fine. The only thing that concerned me, though, like the secondary, you can bring up the injuries where Miles Hartsfield and J.C. Horn and Justin Burris, three guys who all started week one. Hartsfield is starting in place of A.J. Boya, who finally made his Panthers debut today. Those guys are on IR, and Horn's probably gone for the season. Burris will be back eventually. Hartsfield won't see him probably until November or December. The secondary wasn't the issue today. The issue was the, was the defensive line. The Panthers got beat in the trenches on the line of scrimmage but on the offensive side and the defensive side. Daquan Jones, Derek Brown have been so good so far this season. Today, they weren't there. Shaq Thompson's been all over the field. He was not plugging the holes. Neither was Jermaine Carter. Uh, Brian Burns, Hassan Reddick, neither one of those guys got any pressure on. Well, they got pressure on Dak, but none of them, they, never, they didn't sack him today. Morgan Fox as well. That's where I was a little concerned. We've seen the Panthers struggle defensively over the last couple of years, especially when they have those three, those three man fronts defensively, which Bill Snow really employed last season. He's employed again this season so so far against the Jets didn't really have a running back that could hurt him Alvin Kamara the, the Saints kind of abandoned the running game but still they did a great job holding him to five yards rushing Texans nobody but when you saw Zeke and Tony Pollard in a physical Dallas Cowboys offensive line the Panthers had trouble stopping the run so hopefully that's not an issue that persists they got to get healthy I think this is a good unit they're not an elite unit just yet they're a good unit but they need the offense especially the offensive line to step up to be able to play some complimentary football and help them out moving forward he is Julian Council from Locked On Panthers. The segment is Advice of Council. Julian, thanks for hanging out for another Sunday pun day with me. Yeah, I'll talk to you next week. Eagles are in town. Mm. All right, next on the docket, Philly at home. Thanks.